Hi, I'm Howie Goldstein, and welcome to part two of Storage Plus, or CompTIA Storage Plus. Here we're going to talk about the network portion, and we're going to start our network discussion with fiber channel technologies and components. Storage Plus is a registered trademark of CompTIA. And the SNIA, the Storage Networking Industry Association, is a registered trademark of the Storage Networking Industry Association. From a description point of view, we're talking about part two of our four-part series for CompTIA Storage Plus, powered by SNEA. It's a comprehensive look at Fiber Channel from many objectives. We're going to explain the working te terminology associated with Fiber Channel and the difference between a worldwide name and a Fiber Channel ID. The crazy world of semantics in storage, it, you'll see. We'll discuss the nodes and ports associated with Fiber Channel and the advantages and disadvantages of the various topologies. We'll see how Fiber Channel routing works and how we work in conjunction with virtual machines with endport ID virtualization. We'll look at how things are implemented regarding Fiber Channel, the role that software, hardware, and firmware plays in Fiber Channel, and we'll look at those things that make up the levels of the Fiber Channel architecture, and we'll talk about each one in detail. The lower level signaling, both electrical and optical, remember, Fiber channel works on copper as well as fiber. Let's not confuse the media with the protocol. We'll take a look at the interface to the operating system and how the host bus adapter converts the SCSI information to signals that are coming out of fiber channel. We'll take a look at flow control in a fiber channel environment and the constructs of exchanges, sequences, and frames how work gets done. We'll take a look at the services that are requested from the adapters, both the host bus adapter and the storage adapter, and how the switch plays a role in implementing those services. We'll take a look at the concept of a connection, of sessions, and the logins that occur, and why those logins occur, and what they represent. We'll look at error recovery, not only error recovery that happens normally in SCSI, but how FC4 enhanced recovery can actually help deal with problems without even notifying the host that there was a problem that occurred. We'll take a look at switch configuration, both the design and the pathing and the routing that takes place in switches, and how load balancing, load sharing, and load trunking work in fiber channel fabric switches. We'll look at security as well. The objectives that we're trying to satisfy here are to describe the fiber channel benefits that exist within a storage networking infrastructure. Again, how all these fiber channel components work. Understand how to use and what is the fiber channel topologies. And we'll take a look at the various levels of Fiber Channel, including FC0, and all the things that go around FC0, like multi-mode versus single-mode fiber. We'll take a look at FC1, and the roles that FC1 plays in terms of things like 8B, 10B encoding, or the creation of the serial data stream. We'll look at FC2, which allows us to understand how an operation maps into fiber channel exchanges, sequences, and frames. We'll look at both basic and extended link services, and we'll focus specifically on the login processes that occur within fiber channel. From a components point of view, we'll define and take a look at hubs and loop switches and fabric switches and directors and some of the other kinds of devices that exist out there well, what the storage vendors call bridges and routers and gateways. We'll look at the design issues associated with a fabric. We'll take a look at zoning 
in not only zoning configuration, but zoning enforcement as well. We'll see how we implement fiber channel routers, not just switches, but routers, and the idea of virtual fabrics, kind of like the idea of a virtual LAN, or what Cisco calls a vSAN. From a prereq point of view, in terms of storage plus part one, the basics and storage, you typically would have taken that already. I'm not, not a requirement, but uh, that's the design of the flow. In the series, we talk about storage and the basics. We follow that by networks and fiber channel and so on down the line. Although not a prerequisite for this course, CompTIA does recommend either an A plus certification or a network plus certification or a security plus certification. The topics include fiber channel benefits, fiber channel components, and the topologies that are used within fiber channel, node port ID virtualization, the difference between a fiber channel name and a fiber channel address. Then we'll take a look at an overview of the fiber channel architecture and the various levels of fiber channel implemented in hardware, in firmware, and in software. We'll take a look at level zero, kind of where the rubber meets the road physically. We'll look at level one, which deals with 8 bit 10 encoding and scrambling. We'll look at the idea of transmission words and the control that occurs in terms of port state machines and loop port state machines. It's in FC1, we talk about the different topologies. FC2 is the transport function and all the activities that take place in managing the transport of information on behalf of the session that exists between the adapters. The class of service in terms of what some people call quality of service and flow control and how we assure that there's nothing that gets lost in fiber channel. How we handle errors that occur within fiber channel when a bit might shift across the link. We'll take a look at how services are implemented in fiber channel, primarily with service that are actually running on the switch. FC3 functionality, especially security, and FC4, which is the ability in the firmware of the host bus adapter to recognize what's coming down to fiber channel. Is it a SCSI command? Is it SCSI data? Is it an IP datagram that needs routing with IP over fiber channel? We'll look at host bus adapters and what are called converged network adapters, hubs and loop switches, bridges, routers, and gateways, and of course, fabric switches. We'll look at the design of fabric switches and how the pathing works. Switches and zoning, both zoning config and zoning enforcement. From the curriculum path point of view, in terms of tying all this together, again, there are various CompTIA certifications and classes that support those certifications that are helpful, not actually required, but helpful. And there are four parts to the Storage Plus curriculum. Part one was basics and storage. Part two, which is what this course is about, is the fiber channel network technology and components. We'll follow that up in part three with IP storage, performance and troubleshooting in general, and part four is where we talk about applications. Things like backup and recovery, information lifecycle management, uh, storage management, and others as well. And we have exercises and quizzes and demos that we'll support in this course. Remember, at all times, if you've got a question or a comment, use the question comment box.